In this video, I'll be walking you through the pros and cons of the five most popular vans that van lifers choose to convert. And then we'll do a side-by-side -side comparison of the key stats that you need to know, including dimensions, fuel efficiency, and of course, price. If you don't know me, hi, my name is Millie and my partner Jack and I recently purchased a high-roof van that we were in the process of converting into a fully functional off-grid camper. As part of the purchase process, we did a lot, and I mean a lot of research into high van options. Jack is 188 centimeters tall, while I'm 177, and we wanted to be able to stand up comfortably in our van. It was just something that was really important to us. As a quick aside, we are documenting our journey of converting the van in our series, Van Designs. It's like the TV show, Grand Designs, except van, okay. Um, we are complete DIY noobs, and we're learning a lot along the way and having a good time. So if you're interested in checking that out, I'll put the link here or here, wherever it goes. So in this video, I'll be sharing the research that I did with you. So if you're interested, in a particular van or stat, I'll put timestamps in the description box below. So feel free to skip to the part that you're most interested in. But yeah, in this video, I will be counting down five of the most popular high roof van options from lowest to highest roof, and then get into a detailed comparison of each van stat. For the comparison, we'll be using the highest roof option available and we'll be comparing the internal heights of the load compartment. So keep that in mind as you watch. So first on the list in fifth place is the Renault Master. The internal height for the load compartment is the smallest on the list at only 189.4 centimeters. Despite being the shortest on the list, there are some more upsides to choosing a Renault Master for your van conversion. Firstly, the interior of the van is a canvas primed for conversion. The smooth and straight interior lines of the storage area make it the perfect shape. Unlike other vans that have curved and oddly shaped surfaces that can be difficult to navigate. Trust me, we are dealing with that right now. This will make your conversion a lot easier. Also on the positive side, beneath the hood, the Renault Master has a formidable diesel engine and the van can carry a massive load with a load capacity surpassing 1600 kilograms. So if you want to carry a lot of water or haul heavy gear around, then this could be up the option for you. So now into the cons of the Renault Master. Here's the biggest problem with the Renault that ruled it out for us. The 189cm roof on the high roof model is just not tall enough. In Jack's case, even without any interior additions, his head brushed against the ceiling. So when you factor in flooring, uh, roof insulation and roof itself, the headspace proved to be far too limited for comfortable standing. For us, this basically defeats the purpose of having a true stand-up van. Another aspect to be mindful of is the suspension system of the Renault Master. It's tailored for heavy payloads, which can translate into a bumpy ride during your travels. To be honest, when we test drove a Renault, I honestly couldn't imagine myself driving for longer periods of time in that van. It was that uncomfortable. So while shorter journeys might not be an issue, it is definitely worth considering the potential discomfort on longer rides. Last but not least, Let's talk servicing. This is going to come up again and again in this video. The Renault Master requires more frequent maintenance compared to some of its counterparts on our list, which can definitely be a pain if you're on the road a lot. In summary, if you're on the shorter side, the massive low capacity and straight line interior could just outweigh the downsides of a bumpy ride and frequent servicing requirements. Coming in fourth place on the list and the van that we chose for our conversion is the Mercedes-Benz Sprinter. The high roof Sprinter with a roof height of just over 2 meters at 203 centimeters is a long time popular choice for conversion for van lifers. Despite only being the second tallest on the list, there are a lot of pros about this van. This van will run for a long time, much more than 500,000 kilometers, and is known for its ruggedness and reliability. The Sprinter is generally also considered the most reliable van on the market. We've also found the van incredibly comfortable to drive in, which is especially relevant if you're on the road a lot. It is, after all, a Mercedes vehicle. Another great factor on the side of the Mercedes is the fact that it is so popular, which means that there are a lot of secondhand vans in the market and there are a lot of resources available online for DIY conversion. We've already found this super useful in our build. The biggest downside to the Sprinter, which to be honest, does scare me a little, is that it can just be difficult to have repairs done. Very few mechanics will work on Mercedes vans. Most will refer you to the dealer, which can be very costly and difficult to find if you're in remote areas. But for us, this risk 
was far outweighed by the benefits of Mercedes Sprinter. Next on the list, we have an option that has become more popular in recent years, Ford Transit. The Ford Transit offers an impressive high roof or H3 option at two meters and seven centimeters, which makes it one of the tallest vans on the market and third place on the list. This means that if you're two meters or less in height and get clever with your floor and roof design, you should be able to stand comfortably inside your camper van. Another significant advantage of the Ford is its popularity as a vehicle brand. It is widely used in many countries, making it easy to find a place and parts where needed, which can be a deciding factor if you're planning to put a lot of kilometers on your van or again, traveling to remote areas. In the US, Ford is the most popular car brand and in Australia, it ranks comfortably within the top 10. So you should most of the time be able to find replacement parts much easier for the Ford Transit than other models on the list. One common concern with the Ford Transit is the mechanical reliability. While it is a well-known and well-loved van, some users have reported that it may not be as mechanically dependable as some of the competitors. Another major drawback with the Ford Transit and something that ruled it out for me is that the Ford Transit tends to use more gas compared to other vans on our list, making the lowest in terms of mile per gallon or fuel efficiency. If you're interested in a detailed breakdown of fuel efficiency, I'll share the miles per gallon stats for each van on the list at the end of the video. So keep on watching or you can skip to the fuel efficiency deep dive. I'll have timestamps in the description below. In second place is the Aveco Daily. Aveco does two vans that fit into the high roof category, H2, which is 190 centimeters, and H3, which is 210. While not necessarily being the most stylish choice, the Aveco Daily might be the most underrated van on the list, in my opinion. The Aveco boasts an impressive reputation for reliability. Honestly, that peace of mind factor cannot be understated when you're on the road. On potentially a more exciting note, the Aveco comes equipped with a super strong chassis engineered to tackle high stress situations. So of all the vans on the list, this is definitely your best bet for dipping your toe into off-roading without having to fork out for a 4x4 model. On the flip side, as I alluded to earlier, the Aveco isn't the most stylish choice due to its less than streamlined appearance. However, if this is not an issue for you, then the Aveco might just be the way to go. In first place on the high roof list, is the mighty Volkswagen Crafter. The Volkswagen Crafter is tall. The extra high roof version comes in at a staggering 218 centimeters. That's over seven feet, with the regular high roof version coming in at 193 centimeters, making it a great choice for tall people that want to stand up in their van. Not only is the Crafter tall, but it's also really long, at 432 centimeters at the wheelbase in the longest option. With the generous length, this means you get an abundance of space to play with during your conversion. Basically, this van is huge. This means more room to unleash your creativity and customize your van layout exactly as you like. In terms of downsides, one thing to be aware of is that due to its size and weight, the Volkswagen Crafter is less fuel efficient compared to some of its counterparts. This is essential to consider, especially if you're planning long trips or have an eco-conscious heart. Another aspect to keep in mind is potentially the higher cost of the Volkswagen Crafter. While it offers fantastic space and features, this might come at a price tag that's a bit steep other high roof bags on the market. And lastly, due to its large dimensions and weight, maneuvering the Volkswagen Crafter can be a bit of a challenge, particularly in tight spaces or crowded areas. So that is the comparison of the pros and cons of five of the most popular vans that van lappers choose for conversion. Now, let's have a deep dive into the steps. Now, let's have a look at the hype data all in one place so you can see the comparison side by side. So in fifth place, we have the Renault Master with a height of 189.4 centimeters in the H2 model. In fourth place, we have the Mercedes-Benz Sprinter with an internal height of 203 centimeters in the H2 model. In third place with the bronze medal, we have the Ford Transit, which is 207 centimeters in the H2 model. And in the silver medal position, we have the Aveco Daily, which has two models that I would say fall into the high roof category. So there's the H2 at 190 centimeters and the H3 at 210 centimeters. And in first place, we have the mighty Volkswagen Crafter for the gold medal. This again has two models, which I would say fall into the high roof category, the H2 at 193 centimeters and the H3 at 218. 
As a reminder, this height refers to the internal height of the load compartment. So keep that in mind when you're looking at the data. Next, let's have a look at the fuel efficiency comparison. As a disclaimer before we get into it, this information is based on the manufacturer's testing and is a relative comparison, i.e. I'll be comparing each van relative to all of the others, rather than giving you an exact MPG figure. The reason for this is that the actual fuel efficiency is going to be significantly lower than what the manufacturers state, as it varies based on a whole bunch of factors, like the size of the van and the weight that it's carrying, the engine type, the height of the van due to aerodynamics, the gearing, which affects engine speed, as well as driving conditions and a range of other factors. So all that being said, in the fifth spot, the least efficient van on the list is the Ford Transit, followed by in fourth spot, the Volkswagen Crafter. In number three, at the middle of the pack is the Iveco Daily. In second place, we have the Mercedes-Benz Sprinter. And then in first place as the most efficient van on the list is the Renault Master. Last, but certainly not least, Lex Talk Dollars. So what I've done is divide the vans into three different categories from least expensive to most expensive, rather than give you exact figures for each of the vans. The reason that I've done this is that for new vans, the price is gonna vary based on your location and the features that you get with your purchase. And for old vans, uh, your used vans, the price is gonna vary significantly with the number of miles that have been put on it and the age. So in the least expensive category, which generally would take, say you back between 50 and 60,000 Australian dollars new and less than 20,000 used based on a 2010 model, we have the Ford Transit and the Renault Master. In the middle category, uh, which is gonna say you back between 60 and 100,000 dollars new and 20 to 30K used, again, based on this 2010 model, is the Aveco Daily. And then in the most expensive category, which is going to set you back a staggering $100,000 if you buy it new and is generally going to be over $30,000 Aussie dollars used if you're getting a 2010 model is the Mercedes-Benz Sprinter and the Volkswagen Crafter. So there you have it, a comprehensive exploration of the pros and cons of the most popular vans for camper conversion. Ultimately, your choice of the perfect van is a personal one and we'll come down to everything we've mentioned here, as well as what is available to you in your location when you're looking to buy and a range of other factors. If you are in the process of buying a van or have one of the vans in the list, I would love to hear your insight on what you cared about when buying a van. For the next video sharing our research, I'll be talking about what you need to know before buying your van. So if this is interesting to you, please consider subscribing. It lets me know that this content is useful and it really means a lot. Thanks and see you next time.